first started this business up, you know, we, we thought the hard part would be to make the vodka and we'd open the doors and people would come. And that didn't happen actually. Uh, we didn't realize we had to explain to them, A, what a craft distillery was and that it existed and that they could come here and, and buy vodka and gin and rum and all those good things. So we had to start reaching out. Uh, we had to join our local economic development associations. We had to join our local chambers of commerce. We had to reach out to our other neighbors that are businesses here. And over time, those people helped build a network around us of people that invite us to come to their events all the time. So at the beginning, Mike or I would go to these events, we would set up a tasting booth, we would try and educate people about who we were and what we were doing and invite them to come here and come bring a group of people and have a tour and a tasting and really see what our story was all about. And everybody that comes on those tours leaves here and they go and tell everyone they know about us and 10 more people come and then 10 more people come. So this network of just people walking through the doors helped us immensely. We really are in a time crunch because we have an event here tomorrow. Uh, there's going to be 100 people in here tomorrow. The Leduc Niscu uh, EDA is going to be having a meeting in here and they want a little bit of a party afterwards. So we rented this space to set it up as an event center. The problem is uh, it looks like hell. It's a bay right now. My wife went online and bought some pretty fancy lights. So we're going to string those up on the roof here and, uh, and create some ambience in here and try not make it look like a shop bay. The guy that had it before us actually had painted an ugly orange stripe around the whole thing. So I've been here since six this morning painting, hiding this orange stripe. And me and Mike got to move all this stuff out of here and make this look like the kind of place you'd want to have a wedding in it by tomorrow at three o'clock. So no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> Today we're making 100% wheat vodka and we're going to weigh out 460 kilograms of wheat. So we weigh out about 460 kg of hard red wheat that we get just two and a half miles down the road from the Schneider family. We're really driven by the premise of source local, employ local and sell local if we can. We try and bring in as many partners as we can doing that. The very first product that we started making was wheat-based vodka. I met our wheat farmer broken down on the side of the road with his tractor and pulled over to see if he needed a ride. When I asked him if he had any wheat he could sell me, I, he looked at me like I was nuts. But then I explained to him what we were trying to start and what we were going to do and he said, yeah, for sure. Their farm's a mile from here. It's pretty darn convenient to go pick it up. Hey Wayne, how's it going? It's going great today. <laughs> Beautiful weather. Absolutely. That's right. I came by this morning, I thought it was the oat here seed. So. What are you throwing in this field? We're seeding hard red wheat today. Oh, this is our stuff. Yeah, ah, perfect. Right on. Well, I'm glad to see you're out here uh, seeding our wheat that we're going to turn into some premium vodka. Yeah, How see. many generations is it here? Yeah, I'm the fourth generation to farm this particular chunk here. here. Yeah. yeah. And your boy's itching to get at uh, taking it over down yeah, the road. Yeah, he's a little young yet, but he's, he loves going for rides in the track. Absolutely. I owed you a bit of money for those last batch of weed I got from you, so thank you very much. Cash it quick. <laughs> <laughs> Pay for some fertilizer. Yeah, it's already spent. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> thank you very much. Wheat-based vodka traditionally is the best vodka in the world, especially wheat that's grown in a very northern climate. The grain actually grows a bit differently. We have a higher starch content and a lower protein content in northern climates. That's why traditionally you see the best vodkas from northern Russia or from Scandinavia. We have the same grain, maybe better actually here, and people haven't been making vodka from it. So it's cool that this craft distilling is really catching on and we're starting to use this abundant natural resource to make some just phenomenal vodka here. We grind the grain up, actually have the grain grinder off my family farm from, uh, from my granddad down in Gull Lake, Saskatchewan. We used to use it to make chop for our cows. Now we use it to make a really coarse flour. It's, it's kind of like a porridge mix. We auger it into our cook pot or our mash tun and, and we put it through about a six hour cooking process to convert the starch to sugar. The network of businesses and chambers and economic development committees have pushed people and business to us like you wouldn't believe. And whether it's inviting us to go and set up at a conference for teachers, public speakers, or this week we did an event with Alberta Innovates, and we're in a room with a bunch of very creative people, very well connected people, government people, and those people hear our story and they realize how passionate we are about what we're doing and they want to help us. We're kind of a good news story. You know, we started it up right at the depth of the bad economic situation here in Alberta and we created jobs and we put people to work and things have gone well for us when maybe for some other businesses things haven't gone as well. So people like to hear a good, good news story once in a while 
And I don't know, I'm a firm believer in karma. If you're a good person doing good things, that comes back around to you. Now the main reason we're at this event tonight is uh, we received a grant last year from Alberta Innovates uh, to do a cream liqueur project. It's the only product that we make. It's our version of Bailey's. It's actually our top selling product. And it's the only thing that we don't make 100% from scratch on site. And we don't like that idea. We want to be able to make everything right in house. So we've teamed up with a dairy in Camrose called Tiris Dairy. And we've got their cream allotment. And we've been working with researchers at the U of A. And we've got the process just about nailed down now thanks to a grant from Alberta Innovate. So that's why we're here tonight to talk about the progress we've made with uh, different dignitaries that are going to be here. And a few politicians that are going to be here. And hopefully they'll uh, they'll realize that we do good work and maybe we'll get some other grants going forward for some of our other research projects that we're doing. Man, we do a lot of these events all over Alberta. And some of them are right close to home in Edmonton like this. And then we've actually driven all the way up to Manning to do tasting events for liquor stores up there. Meet some amazing people when you go to these things. And lots of times make some good business connections too. And it's an opportunity for us to engage people one-on-one. -on -one and to let them taste our stuff. And we always say, when you taste it, you believe in it. Simple as that. So we've got this down to a science after three and a half years of doing this. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'd do without her. She's the one that organizes all this stuff. She packs everything up. She has like a checklist. Me and Mike, we just wing it when we go. And then we get there and we don't have half the stuff that we need. We're running down the, to Walmart or someplace like that. Spending money we don't need to be spending, getting cups and getting shot glasses and things like that. So, here, I'll put this up here. We just have the one brum here? We have both. Okay. Can you put this in behind? Thanks, baby. So we've got lemonade so we can make raspberry vodka lemonades tonight. We've got some pink grapefruit juice. Goes really well with our uh, wild rose gin to make a greyhound. And of course, we're going to make our garlic vodka Caesars. We've got some Clamato here for that. If people want to try the double double, we're going to give them little shots of double double too, and see what kind of reaction we get. Usually, everybody that tries it say it, they'll say that it's better than Bailey's. So we'll see how many people say that tonight. We were using the event center at more as a storage space uh, for the time being. So we had to move all this stuff out, uh, move those vats out, uh, move the pool tables, move the foosball table, fold up the ping pong table, get some of the band equipment out out of the way and uh, set up the PA system, all the tables and chairs. So it was a busy day. Beast. Found this thing in a farmer's field. It had been sitting there for three years. Uh, we've got a little forklift, but it, it's not really good for ripping around outside or anything like that. So I uh, had to get it out of there with a picker truck. It had sunk in the mud, put a new battery in it, fired it up. It's been running great ever since, actually. And we've learned that we need to do things affordably as possible. So uh, anytime we hear about a dairy that's going under or remodeling, we go buy their tanks and we can get them pretty much for the price of scrap steel. So that's a big deal for us. If I bought a tank like this for mash cooking, it'd be $25,000 US and we picked this up for a few thousand dollars. The only deal was, if we wanted one, we had to take three. And I don't really have a use for three, so we're gonna probably sell off the other two. I've been painting since 6 a.m. this morning. I was actually gonna come back late last night and, uh, and try and get this all done so that we could focus on setting the other bay up. But uh, I actually fell asleep, <laughs> which doesn't come very often when you're a distillery owner. Uh, the days, they tend to start at 5.30 in the morning and end about 12.30 at night. So uh, anybody thinks owning a distillery is an easy way to make money. It's a good way to have a long, long number of hours and uh, probably make about $1.20 an hour by the time you figure it out. <laughs> all right, Mike, it's all in your hands now, man. I got to run. I got a lunch meeting at Blackjacks with uh, Jordan from Danger Cats. Sounds good. All right, see you in a bit. See you later. This is the place right here. Blackjacks, they've been here for 30 plus years. Blackjacks, they stock our garlic vodka for no making way. Caesars. Yeah, you betcha. So we can have a hell of a Caesar. We're right gonna here. have a Caesar right now. Yeah, go say hi to Krista, the owner. After you, sir. She's around. Hello, how are you? I'm good. All right, cool. you gonna try a garlic vodka Caesar, oh, buddy? Absolutely. All right. These guys make some uh, wicked food here too. They have a huge menu, everything from Chinese food to steaks to all day breakfast. We have something for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Okay, what can I get you guys to drink? We gotta have garlic Caesars when we yeah, come here, you know that, doubles. you betcha. Singles or doubles? Uh, singles, because we still gotta go back to work. Jeff didn't say how many singles he was gonna have, but Mike's got work to do, so let's see what's going on at the distillery. First thing we do is turn on the agitator motor, main power. Once your conversion is finished, then you have to boil the mash for approximately five minutes or so to gelatinize the grain and release more starch and sugar out of it. We add another enzyme which will take the complex sugars that are left in the mash and break those down into simple sugars as well. There are two types of enzymes that we start out with. It's Teramel SC is the one. That's what allows the starch conversion to happen or the starch molecules to break down into sugar molecules. And then the second one that we put in at the beginning of the mashing is called Viscoferm. Uh, that allows the mash to not uh, turn into bread or solidify, basically. Took the smallest vat. Here I'm driving on the gravel with the smallest vat and the wheels start digging in and she just digs right in and sinks. And now I'm like, one vat to go and I can't get it uh, over there. I don't know what to do. Uh, Jeff's not around because he's with the Danger Cat boys, I believe, having lunch. Our garlic vodka Caesar is our most successful cocktail. And uh, these guys put it in for us. The local Boston Pizza and Leduc put it in too. So now we have got a goal to try and get in every Boston pizza in Alberta if we can. So. You always adjust the pH value of the mash in order to make sure that the enzymes and the yeast will work properly. And that's 4.5 to 5.5 pH. And then the last thing we do is we chill it all the way down to 34 degrees Celsius. Uh, once we have the mash at 34 degrees Celsius, we're ready to pitch our yeast in it. So we hydrate the yeast and a little bit of the mash, or wort, uh, four to six liters of it. Um, the yeast will start to get active and take off and create a nice head on the pot that we're hydrating the yeast in. Once we've got a nice head on the yeast, we then pour that into the mash tun. We let it stir around for about five minutes or so, and then we pump it into one of our fermentation tanks. Four to six days later, we've got about 10% alcohol and about a thousand liters of mash. You have to specifically ask for it. And same when people go into a liquor store and they're looking for our stuff, yeah. they gotta ask for our stuff. Uh, we're in about almost 800 liquor stores in Alberta right now, uh, but we make 40 different products. So you know, so it's not realistic for a liquor store to carry all 40 of these products. No. They'll have some, you know, our, our garlic vodka, they'll have our double-double coffee cream liqueur, they'll have our sugar beet rum, our raspberry vodka, our gin, wild rose gin. So our yeah. top sellers are the ones that we put into the big warehouse in St. Albert that uh, distributes to all the liquor stores. Yeah, so you can do drop-in tours, and that's during regular business hours from 10 to 6 during the week, and noon to 5 on Saturdays. Try the Caesar, see what you think. Cheers. Oh, I know what I think. <laughs> mm. It's dynamite, baby. We're going to be launching our own network. Um, obviously, you're familiar with the Danger Cats. That's oh, yeah. going to be you our betcha. flagship show. Okay. But we want more. We want to bring any content that a guy would like a Western Canadian guy, our demographic. Oh, you're in the what right place. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Whiskey, <laughs> vodka, and sugar beet rum. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think we can work together for sure. Yeah. Uh, I've got some ideas since we talked on the phone yesterday, and yeah. I think we could actually probably even make a Danger Cats vodka for you. Come if on. You're interested. Absolutely. A very own Danger Cats. Custom vodka. labeled. Get it in liquor stores. The whole thing. Yeah. <sighs> I, Right there, baby. <laughs> Being a liquor store near you yeah. sooner than later. <laughs> that gets a guy fired up. I gotta tell Hack. So after this, we should uh, rip over the distillery. It's only a couple blocks away. And uh, show you around a bit, let you taste some of our products. And we'll come up with a plan on how to do this. You guys are just up the road, right? Two, Not block, too far from the airport two blocks off QE2. Easy to find us. Yeah, let's do right it. Right in this here. Yeah. We're gonna have to get Hack here. For the, for the launch or something. Absolutely. Frick, this is I'll insane. put them to work. Do it, I would. You try every day though, good luck. <laughs> it's tough to ask. Sometimes you never know when a new opportunity is going to walk in the door. So for instance, this week I uh, got approached by a fellow named Jordan Walsh. With uh, He works with an outfit called Danger Cats and uh, came up with the idea maybe doing a custom labeled vodka for them. 
you know, we're willing to try anything and work with anybody as long as they're the same kind of people as us and they're, they're uh, wanting to create a good environment. And uh, we met with these guys, they seemed like good guys, and we got some potato vodka that they liked the taste of. Uh, we got some custom labels done up. Mike does all that in-house. I'm so lucky to have him to do that. Otherwise, that cost would just be exorbitant. They're going to do a bunch of marketing on their end and, and see if they can find people that are interested in maybe picking up something that's it's a little bit different than what you see out there. Uh, it's still in our drilling rig bottle, and a lot of their clientele is, is rig type of guys, so I think it's going to sell out pretty good. So we're really lucky, the, the building that we're in here that's owned by the Lehmans, they've got fantastic tenants in here. So anytime we get into any kind of trouble, we just go down the line and, and talk to the other business owners and see if they can help us out and we do the same thing for them. You know, we got our forklift stuck in the, in the gravel out here. It's a forklift that's not really supposed to go on gravel, but Mike thought it might make it through. It was a little soft and wet, so next thing you know, Ernie down the way who restores cars, he's out there helping with his one ton and giving us a pull. You know, it's great to have that kind of community around you and we want to support them back as much as they support us every chance we get. We then pump that thousand liters of mash into our still and the first step is to strip all the alcohol out of it. So we call it a stripping run. Uh, basically what we're doing is steaming the alcohol out of the mash and capturing it at the end of the still. We get approximately 100 liters of alcohol. That run takes about two to three hours to do a stripping run. And then after we've got enough stripped alcohol captured, we will then put it back into the still. Uh, we will we'll run it through the still a second time and we call that a spirit run. And on the spirit run, uh, that can take about five hours, sometimes six hours, depending on how big the, the pot or how full the pot is, how big the run is. Um, and uh, what we do is, again, start turning that alcohol into vapor. And we allow the still or the refracting columns to separate the alcohols from each other and purify it. Uh, and then it comes off the still uh, at a higher percentage and a nice, clean tasting alcohol. Right up to 96.5% alcohol, actually. Uh, it's as pure as you can get it. The process we put it through makes a very clean, very smooth vodka. Yeah, we're starting to run out of time here. We have this has to be done by three. So for this event tonight, I guess uh, there's five or six businesses that are going to set up little displays for uh, the Economic Development Committee to come in. How about 100 people, I think, 90 people? So they'll come through, they'll view their booths, get their little business pitches, and then come in the back and uh, have a cocktail and some appies. We've got some stuff catered in, and uh, they're doing a presentation, uh, kind of a sit-down meeting at an AGM, and then afterwards socializing. This has to be ready by three. Well, with time running out fast, the crew got the place cleaned up real quick. And just to play it safe, they gave Mike something a little easier to get unstuck. We managed to get everything all out and the conference center all set up and ready to go and we're ready to have the big party. So I'm gonna run over there and check last minute to make sure everything's set up the way they want. And we're good to go. Good man, uh, good man, absolutely. I'm glad you came by. There's gonna be a little whiskey somewhere, eh? There'll be whiskey, yeah, there'll be some gin, here. there'll be some vodka. Right on. You're gonna play some of your own original tunes? Play some of my originals, we'll play a couple covers, we'll make sure everybody has a little something to sing along with. Sounds and, good. Uh, you know, these guys aren't expecting live music tonight, so this is gonna be a nice special treat for yeah, them. That's awesome, like I said, uh, we come by to grab another bottle of Double Double for the wife and... Uh, she goes through a bit of that. Oh my God. <laughs> I say she goes through it. Uh, she puts about that much in her coffee. I put about that much on my ice cream. I said, honey, you drank it all up again. <laughs> Smart. All right, let me show you next door where you're setting up. So we'll be here. I think this event will wrap up about 9 30, 10 o'clock. I haven't answered any emails or phone calls in the last two days. I'm going to be here till one in the morning again, but man, this is fun. <laughs> We're 
were hopping in here tonight. You know, we didn't think we were going to get it done in time, but we were done with about five minutes to spare. So that's how sometimes the best laid plans come together, right? Here you go, sir. Enjoy. Thank you, very much. you bet. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in this week. You learned a little bit about our wheat vodka. Next week, you're gonna learn the next step we do with it. We turn it into flavored vodka. Sneak peek, our most popular flavor is garlic. What the hell do you put that in? It looks like we got a repair job to do here. We'll have to get Grant to do that on Thursday when he gets in.